Okay, this is, uh, we got a question from little TR27, and the question is, what to do after a bad scrimmage in practice? This person, they missed three goals, they had a handball, they had energy during the, the training, but they didn't know how to use it, and they were more angry, angrier, they were more angry than sad about this, and then the question was, another follow-up question, right? The first is what to do after a bad scrimmage and practice. And the second question is what to do to calm down or feel better after a bad session. Okay, what to do after a bad scrimmage or practice. So I've just recently learned about this. This is Tara Brock who says you could use this acronym called RAIN. It's called RAIN, right? It's, it's recognize, allow, investigate, and nurture, right? You wanna recognize what is happening. So like you're saying, you had a bad practice or scrimmage, and it says allow. It says allow the experience to be there just as it is. And the third part is, right, the I is investigate. It says investigate with interest and with care, right? Investigate um, your emotions. And then you want to, right, after you've taken the time to recognize, allow, investigate, then you want to um, nurture, it says, with self-compassion. So recognizing that you gave it your best effort and um, right, you're gonna work to, work, work to become a better player. And yeah, so you wanna nurture yourself. So, right, the question is what to do after a bad scrimmage or practice. You could also start to make a plan to, um, to um, really prepare, right? So you maybe this maybe this means working on your warm up, right? Maybe getting yourself in the zone. Are you someone who needs to? Um, do you have so much energy that you actually need to calm down, or do you have not enough that you need to um, kind of elevate yourself before before um, your training and scrimmages? Um, This, this guy's name's Tim Ferriss. He was practicing um, working towards a, a speech. And what he would do is um, he would intentionally put himself in, in situations where he had, uh, where his anxiety was elevated. So he would drink two espressos, then he would give this, his actual speech, right? He gave his TED talk in front of, um, during lunch breaks at Fortune 500 companies, right? So by repeating, putting himself in uncomfortable situations, it would allow him to be comfortable. So, you know, I'm not necessarily saying that you are um, nervous per se, but I would increase, right? Um, mistakes happen, right? As long as you're playing, you give it your best effort. It's like, you know, you're human. So that's, that's the beauty of being human to make mistakes and to um, train smarter, right? If you're not do doing a juggling practice, five minutes of juggling a day, 10 minutes of juggling a day, right? Start very small, two minutes of juggling a day, right? With either a tennis ball or a heavy ball. I love reactors, 2.2 pound heavy ball, right? Doing just five minutes of practicing a day. And I feel like if you're not already doing it, you, you know, you'll feel sharper during practice. Um, sense ball, I'd recommend this to a lot of players. It's a ball and a rope or uh, even a skills kick trainer. That one's cheaper, right? SKLZ kick trainer. Get, you know, get to practice five to mm -hmm. 10 minutes early and get, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of repetitions on the ball so that you can be, right? If your energy is, is maybe too high for practice you can actually, you bring it down a little bit. So now you're more even keel and you could be in the zone. Um, so you said you had energy. This person says they had energy and, um, but they want to use more of it. You know, if you've got more energy after training, who says you can't stay for longer and uh, work on the little things, your juggling, right? Your dribbling dribbling sequences, right? Ball on the rope, your breathing. Um, so if you've got more energy after the session, you know, you could, you, could, um, you could get a great half an hour focused, relaxed session and kind of get your, get out of your body, 
right? Tony Robbins, he says, if you're, you know, if something's troubling your mind, move the body around, and then if your body's not feeling good, you gotta change, change your mind about that. Um, there's a story about Michael Phelps, who before, the day before, the, it was either the night before his next training session or um, big swim, he would mentally go through his warm-up and then he would have a routine for his warm-up and then he would mentally, he would visualize him doing the races so that when it came to race day, he already performed, he had basically already lived the full, he had lived through his win and he had lived through his performance. So, you know, he said actually that the wins, they felt effortless. And the, the whole idea is to, before you even get to your session, you know, you could visualize on the ride over there or um, the night before or before bed, visualize how you're gonna warm up, visualize yourself being relaxed, visualize, visualize the good things that you're going to do and then execute them when it comes to um, the game day, right? Having a good plan is better than having, um, you know, even if you have a bad plan, right? Even if you have a bad visualiz visualization session, I believe it'll improve your your training session, right? So, um, the, but the, the big key takeaway, even if you watched if you watched only just this part for whatever reason, you'd start with the last um, thirty seconds. Is recognize, right? Recognize that you have a bad bad practice. Allow the experience to just be there, just as as it is. Investigate, right? Ideas, thoughts. You know, what can you do? What can you do? Either you know, mentally rethink, rethink. Um, how you could make it better or what you can learn from it and then again nurture nurture with self-care and compassion right that's tara brock check that out and um if you've got any questions reach out i hope this helps okay